Let's just say it, Web3 sucks at product launches. And it's partly because marketing in Web3 is really hard. And Immutable has been in this space and building for six years. They've been around longer than most companies. So they have developed a three-step system for how they help ensure that every product launch is as successful as it can be and really marketing to the masses. So I sat down today with head of product marketing at Immutable, Michael Powell, to talk about how Immutable does what they do and what this three-step system involves. But before we get into it, if you have been enjoying this content, we're gonna have a lot more amazing stuff coming out of Immutable this year. So please do consider subscribing to the channel, liking this video, leaving a comment below, letting us know what you think. We love reading your comments. And with that, here's Michael Powell. All right, Michael, you and I have talked about this a little bit. I know Immutable has this great, again, three-step system for their product launches. Let's talk about number one first, the strategy. This might sound obvious to people, like you need to have a strategy, but you guys think about it, I, I think, a bit differently. So talk to me about what this means. You're exactly right, Carly. And when we start with strategy, I'm going to dive into an, an example first, just to make it real. We've been talking to many different AAA game studios you know, over the course of Immutable's existence. And one of the things that continued to come up every time was this idea of player experience. The player experience from the acquisition point, onboarding, and throughout the game and how challenging of a process it was, right? Sometimes it feels like when you're trying to play a new Web3 game, it's like setting up a new bank account, right? So developing that unique perspective on what is the problem that our target audience is actually dealing with? Why are they hesitant to get into Web3? And I think what we see in a lot of different Web3 groups and different projects that are going on, um, sometimes people misconstrue the tech for being enough on its own, mm. right? Instead of really flipping the script and thinking about, okay, what are the core problems and the core pain points that our target audience is really going through? And involving deep market research and understanding the voice of your users, you can arrive at a point where it's not about the product or the technology itself, but it comes down to what are we solving for our core audience, in this case, AAA game studios. And Passport was our solution to this user onboarding and user acquisition problem that was making game studios very hesitant of jumping into the space. Such a good point. I do think that there are so many of us in this space who are in love with the tech and for good reason, but sometimes to the point where we're not even thinking about, are we solving a problem? We're just excited by this new fun thing we're doing with the tech. So I think that's such a good thing to emphasize for Web3 folks in particular. And again, why you and I have talked about this a little bit before. So I'm like, okay, strategy, sure but you're like, no, 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 strategy is like solving a real problem. <laughs> and uh, and you guys have, have had experience with that firsthand. All right, Michael, let's talk about step two of a successful product launch. I know you call this the story. Tell us what does the story mean in this step two context? Yes, Carlos, this is actually my favorite part of our three-step journey. And it's one that teams, especially in Web3, so often overlook. They have a product and they're thinking about, okay, how are we going to bring this to market and what are we going to tweet about, right? But this step two around developing the story really is getting the internal alignment around what emotion do you want your target audience to feel? That storytelling, using analogies, bringing your audience with you in the journey is such a critical piece. But first, you have to start by getting just that enablement internal piece done well, right? You need everyone singing from the same song sheet. You have to make sure that you have the correct sales collateral in place. Your support team is enabled to answer any questions that may come up. And there is full alignment across the team in that story you're telling. And again, most importantly, the emotion that you're trying to evoke from your target audience. And with Immutable Passport, one anecdote that I like to share is it was originally viewed by many teams internally at Immutable as a wallet. And our team really tried to up-level that thinking across the org around, it's actually a player identity solution. It's more than a wallet. Immutable Passport allows people to travel through different marketplaces and games with all of their assets, their funds, their achievements intact. Wallet, yes, is one feature of the product, but we really wanted that emotion to be around, this is a player identity, and without it, I can't onboard users effectively into my game. 
Yeah, and, and, and people think about storytelling as being this like external thing you're doing. You're telling a story to the world, but you're like, too often that means you haven't actually told the story cohesively internally. So then you have like mixed messages going out of different departments, some teams calling it a wallet, like not getting that bigger picture identity in this case piece, uh, the example you're giving, it makes a lot of sense. Also, I feel like so important as teams scale, it's so good to get your insight because you are one of the, in some ways, few Web3 companies that has been around for six years that has really scaled. And so these kinds of things, I feel like you can sometimes gloss over them if you're really small in the very beginning. But if a team is looking to grow and like launch products as a bigger and bigger company in the future, like not missing that step feels like it's even more crucial. Exactly, Carly. And that's actually become more and more apparent as our team has grown. And we've built out internal processes around meetings and documents to make sure that we are actually scaling these stories effectively. And it's not just sharing the dev docs across the team and understanding, okay, here are the product specs, but actually, again, goes back to that emotion, that story that we were trying to tell that's really going to effectively land the product in market. Okay, let's talk about the third and final crucial step in a successful Web3 product launch, the execution. Again, maybe sounds obvious, sounds simple. What does it actually mean to you and within Immutable? In step two, we really developed what that story was going to be and make sure that we have full internal alignment around the emotion that we were going to evoke with our target audience. Now with the execution step, we are bringing that story to market externally. And really the core essence of what the execution step entails, and this is really where the rubber meets the road, is around telling your story to the right audience at the right place at the right time. And while that may sound pretty uh, you know, common understanding across marketing people, um, I think one thing that we typically see other spaces and other teams get wrong in this area is it goes back to leading with the product, right? Um, you're leading with the product and you're painting it in a positive light. Here's what our product can do for you. But human psychology, right? We are twice as motivated by risk aversion, right? By understanding what that vulnerability could be or what's wrong with my business. What is going to happen to me if I don't take action, right? So instead of thinking about here's what my product can do for you, it's flipping it on its head a little bit and thinking about here's what will happen without Immutable Passport. The great Immutable Passport example here is we we're actually able to go to game studios and say, look, 60% of the players in your user acquisition funnel are dropping off before they even play your game. What's gonna happen to your business if people aren't playing your game, right? That's a very motivational tactic um, and story to land. And with Immutable Passport, we could actually show that three times as many people are going to be playing your game just by using the onboarding strategies and the features that Immutable Passport offers and ultimately lead to not only greater monthly active users, but a greater revenue stream for your business at the end of the day. So that risk aversion piece, I think, is really important for uh, different Web3 teams to keep in mind. Yeah, it totally reminds me of, of the point we're making earlier around like Web3 can sometimes get so excited about its own tech, it stops focusing on the problem. It makes sense that then when they're getting to this final marketing stage, this external marketing stage, there's also a tendency to just be like, see, the tech is really cool. Here's all the things it can do without doing what you just described, which is say like, here's what you're risking by not using this product, right? Like here's the real problem we're solving and, and this problem is going to persist and be a, a, a continuing problem for you in all these ways and maybe even grow as a problem if you don't use this product which it totally makes sense that that would be that much more of an effective way to convert a user. Um, but it's not necessarily, I think, people's first instinct. Exactly right, Carly. And one thing that has really stuck with me is lead to, not lead with. A lot of different product launches that you see are leading with. They lead with their product and they're talking about the value that it adds. But again, you want to paint that picture and offer unique insights to your target audience around this is what's going to happen to your business and here's what our product can do, leading them to that, right? So you're taking them along in that journey, making them feel the pain of inaction and then ultimately saying, don't worry, I have a solution for you and let us be your guide along the way. 
I love it. Michael, thank you so much for being here. You have the strategy, the story, the execution, the three key pieces to a successful product launch that Immutable has been using for, I don't know how long, I don't know exactly when you developed this, but again, you're six years into this Web3 game and, and these lessons that I think can apply to any marketer, but that are particularly salient for a Web3 audience, because I think we have not always nailed this as a Web3 community. So thank you so much for sharing your insight. I really appreciate it. Anytime, Carly. Great to chat. And if folks enjoyed this, like I said, we're going to have a lot more amazing content coming out on the Immutable channel, talking to more Immutable executives about how they do what they do. So please consider subscribing to the channel, liking this video, leaving a comment below to let us know what you think, if you learned something. We love to hear from you. And with that, have a great week.